Welcome, welcome, one and all, in here, out there, all around the world, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Right now, the big story... The big story continues to be the extraordinary damage wreaked on Florida by Hurricane Ian. It's going to be a long road back for these people. If you're looking for a way to help, we've got a list of charities pinned to our Twitter account at, at Colbert Late Show. You can go there. Please give generously. We hope the state of Florida gets back to normal soon because in Florida, normal is still very strange. <laughs> which is why we enjoy making so many jokes about that state. And it's, it's so important to get these people the food, the water, the shelter, whatever they need to get back on their feet, not only because it's the right thing to do, but because my graphics team has a mock-up of an alligator doing meth on a jet ski. <laughs> just burning a hole in their pocket. <laughs> Today, President Biden flew down to Florida and met with Florida governor and man who learned how to stand from a men's room sign... <laughs> Ron DeSantis. Governor DeSantis has been touring damaged areas to let the residents know they're not forgotten. And one thing that few will ever forget is the white knee-high boots he was sporting. <laughs> Looks a little less governor on the go and more like governor of the go-go's. <laughs> President Biden and Governor DeSantis put aside their politics and appeared together to let Floridians know that help is on the way. And the governor kicked things off by making the extent of the damage very clear. These storms come, they're on the horizon. You kind of project, hey, it could be really bad. Oftentimes, it doesn't necessarily get to that level. Well, this was, this was the full Monty. Some may question whether a comedy about fully nude male strippers <laughs> is the most appropriate way to refer to a natural disaster. But keep in mind, anytime you look at a map of Florida, you're getting the full Monty. <laughs> Now, <laughs> President Biden spoke next, and it was a heartwarming speech about unity, recovery, and strength. But I got to point out, at no point did he throw paper towels into a desperate crowd, raising the troubling question, is Biden too old to ricochet a roll of brawny off a pensioner's noggin? <laughs> well, after the speech, you got to ask, after the speech, the president was greeted by Fort Myers Beach Mayor Ray Murphy and was caught saying this to the mayor on a hot mic. No one f the yeah, f the <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, you applaud, but I think it is wrong for CBS to make me bleep that. <laughs> up the coast, uh, up the coast in Georgia. Scandal still surrounds GOP Senate candidate and neck with a side order of head. <laughs> Herschel Walker. This week, the Daily Beast reported that Walker, who has been vocally anti-abortion, paid for his girlfriend to have an abortion back in 2009. Now we've learned GOP knew about Walker's complete hypocrisy for a long time, but their reaction ran the gamut from, this abortion thing I heard, having more kids than he was copping to, I heard. I had heard about the alleged liabilities, to. Eh, it's not going to come out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we knew about all of it. The secret kids, the abortion cover-up, the backyard pit where he makes toddlers fight raccoons for sport. <laughs> oh, you guys hadn't heard about them one yet? <laughs> That's not going to come out. <laughs> and even if it does, sometimes the toddlers win. <laughs> they generally did not seem too worried because, as another strategist put it, Herschel Walker is just a wealthy, famous football player who is obviously spreading his seed. <laughs> just spreading his seed. His sex is unsafe. He will not be a part of it. His child's life. But... GOP is standing by their man, especially former Speaker of the House and current puckered sphincter. <laughs> Newt Gingrich. Gingrich went on the Fox News last night to defend Walker. You know, he's been through a long, tough period. He had a lot of concussions coming out of football. He suffered PTSD. See? Walker isn't a bad guy. He's just had so many concussions, he can't possibly be held accountable for his actions. You know, a senator. Also, da, 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 da. Mm. 
Also, PTSD isn't the acronym you're looking for, Newt. Unless you think it means probably three secret daughters. <laughs> and because it's the GOP, Nigrich had to bring up the man upstairs. I think he's a remarkable person. I think he's the most important Senate candidate in the country because he'll do more to change the Senate just by the sheer presence, by his confidence, by his deep commitment to Christ. Yes. Who could be more committed to Christ? Certainly not his opponent, the Honorable Reverend Dr. <laughs> Raphael Warnock, pastor of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, spiritual home of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Saying Walker is more Christian than Warnock is like saying you're more into baseball than Mr. Met. <laughs> His head is a baseball, and he still hasn't had as many concussions as Herschel Walker. <laughs> Over in, uh, what's the state? Wisconsin, we got a surprising admission from Republican senator and ghost doomed to haunt a La Quinta Inn, <laughs> Ron Johnson. As we've known for a while now, on the morning of January 6th, Senator Johnson's staff attempted to deliver to Vice President Mike Pence lists of fake electors who would then be used as part of their plot to overturn the election. Johnson has repeatedly denied any involvement, but yesterday he acknowledged texting with the former president's attorney on January 6th. Well, here's something no one's ever said before. It looks like Ron Johnson knew what he was doing. <laughs> this is pretty damning, but uh, Ron John, as the TikTokers call him, claims he had no choice here, saying, what would you do if you got a text from the attorney for the president of the United States? Uh, smash my phone, change my name, and burn off my fingertips with a curling iron? <laughs> Ronson said he had to respond to it. And anyway, he couldn't have done that much conspiracy because the entire episode lasted about an hour. You can do lots of illegal stuff in a short period of time, Senator. Your Honor, I plead not guilty. I was only stabbing him for about an hour. <laughs> plus, plus, Senator Johnson says he didn't know the contents of the package the former president's attorney wanted him to deliver. So Johnson's just an unwitting courier of illegal contraband. Yes, I swallowed those 15 balloons, but I didn't know they were full of heroin. <laughs> I just thought there was a six-year-old's birthday party in my stomach. <laughs> oh, we also got a new uh, little snippet of, of crazy from Georgia representative and cursed doll fashioned from silly putty and hate, Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> At a recent rally in Michigan, Greene rallied against Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg for promoting electric vehicles. The Democrats like Pete Buttigieg want to emasculate the way we drive. He thinks electric cars should use the same bathrooms as gas-powered cars. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a lady and I don't drive stick. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means. There's no way, there's no way <laughs> to make that <laughs> mean anything. <laughs> Buttigieg, clap back. I literally don't even understand what that means. I mean, my sense of manhood is not connected to whether my vehicle is fueled by gasoline or whether it's fueled by electricity. Sounds like a guy who never connected his manhood to his car. <laughs> That's how I check my oil level. <laughs> Nature's dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> over, in, over in Ukraine, Russians continue to have their asses handed to them on a bed of pickled cabbage. It's got some... Mm -hmm. It's gotten uh, some people worried that a cornered Putin may resort to using a tactical nuclear weapon. But the people of Ukraine are saying, screw that, literally, because some Ukrainians are responding to the threat of nukes by organizing an orgy. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what we all plan to do. It's all in that Cold War PSA, suck and cover. <laughs> More than... <laughs> sure. What's the name of the turtle? What's the turtle's name? More than 15,000 people have already signed up for the orgy, which is set to take place on a hillside of Kyiv with the intention to head there in the event of a nuclear attack as opposed to finding the nearest bunker. I get it. I mean, with the bombs falling, why kiss your ass goodbye when you could have somebody else do it? <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Former White House speechwriter Tony Keenan is here. But when we come back, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Tony!